Well, happy Saturday to you. That uh, intro music with our opening slide was one of Derek Nelson's songs. It's actually is a song called A Smile a Day from his album uh, Music Meditation Volume One. And we're going to be having a conversation with Derek Nelson today. You're going to find out more about him, about his music and about where you can actually get his music like this one and, and a lot of his uh, instrumental and vocal music. So for now, put on the brakes, grab a cup of coffee and join the conversation because it is time once again for Coffee Breaks with Steve. Well, here we are. Happy Saturday, March 11th, 2023. March 11th. It's um, the year is moving quite along. We're not quite into spring yet. And we're getting, we're still getting, we had some snow yesterday here in Spokane, but it's melting off today. I think we're supposed to get a little bit more maybe in the next week. And I know different places around the country are getting still snow. Uh, now down in California, they're getting hit with some of the melt off of the snow that hit their upper foothills and mountains and a lot of rain. And that creates some flooding issues and there's weather issues all around the country. So I hope wherever you are, the weather isn't affecting you too adversely. You're staying safe. You're staying warm if you need to. Or has it been some high temperatures, unusually high temperatures in some parts of the country. You're staying cool if you need to. Uh, Corianne is here. Good morning. Kathy Garlick. Good hey, looking better than I expected. You know. I don't, I've so run out of expectations for my own self look that, that any time I can actually be in front of the camera and not look like death warmed over, I'm doing okay. I know there was a reason why you said that. Good morning, Shalan. Good morning, Rick. Uh, Shalan says she's putting on the break. She's joining the conversation. What are you drinking this morning, Shalan? I know you're not having your coffee. Good morning, Carla. Good to see you on here as well. It's good to have you here. If you are joining in with us live, make sure that you do say hello in the chat so we know that you're here and, and you can join in the conversation when we get into our topic today. And if you are tuning in later on, you're watching this recorded at a different time or on a different date, you can still participate in the conversation. You can still get in on the chat and be a part of this conversation. We do like to keep track. Even later on, I go back and look and see who is making comments on here. So, yes, um, the usual husband has brought me my Chaco green smoothie and a mug of London fog. Very good. Jerry Thompson, good morning. All right. Well, I hope everybody's doing well, and uh, I'm, I'm doing all right this morning, and uh, glad to be here with you. We're going to get into our topic in just a few minutes, but I wanted to share some things going on and special days with you. So if I can remember which buttons I'm supposed to push, we'll, we'll get into doing that. Do, do make sure that you're saying hello, though, because I want to know that you're here. We're looking at our special days this week, March 11th through March 17th. What do we have going on? Today is National Check Your Batteries Day, which seems like a weird one, but they actually put this, I think, they do this, at this point, it's tied to when we're changing the time. It's like, it's a good time to check and make sure all of your, like your smoke alarm batteries and, and those types of things are all charged. And, and if you need to change things, this is the time to change them. So I, I assume that's what that's about. I mean, I'm not going around with every appliance and device that I have, you know, handheld device and making sure that the batteries are good. I check those when the batteries tell me they're going dead. So um, Kathy Garlic, happy birthday to Frank the Dad. We'll be actually, I'm going to mention that here in a few minutes. That's that's absolutely correct. And uh, also, so with that, overnight tonight, we make the switch to daylight savings time, spring ahead. Spring, I almost went like this spring ahead, which means that we actually lose an hour of sleep tonight, but we gain an hour of daylight, is the whole idea. You know, there's still talk, there's still been bills, and I think there's a current bill still sitting in front of Congress to do away with the time change. I don't remember which way they're going to keep it, supposedly, but this has been going back and forth for years. And there are a couple of states or portions of states in some cases that um, don't ever make the switch. They stay with the same time all year. What's Rick saying? When we got a new car battery and connector, it fixed our anti-lock brake system. No kidding. Hey, 
I love that. Unless you're in, in Utah. I don't think it's Utah, Shalane, that doesn't change times. Kathy, can you speak to that? Indiana does not, or part of Indiana does not, but I don't remember where else does not. And maybe I'm just forgetting that it was Utah. I've been to Utah and I've lived in Utah for a brief period of time. So I should, only if you want to, Shalane, totally optional. Yeah. Um, so yes, we're making that switch overnight tonight. It's, the cool thing is anymore it used to be you had to go around the house and change everything. Now, so many of the clocks and systems in the house are hooked up to the Wi-Fi, and they, you know, to the internet. They change automatically, like on your, on your, um, if you still have a DVD player or your cable box, your TV. If you have um, some of the, the devices, I'm not going to say the name out loud because I've got one in this room and it'll try to talk to me. But the devices that you can talk to and ask questions and they answer things, they change automatically. I think even uh, phones and and smart devices all change on their own, but there's still a handful of things I've got to go around and change before I go to bed tonight. But that's all right. We'll take care of those. Spring ahead. March 12th is National Plant a Flower Day. We're getting close enough to spring. I know people are already doing that. I've seen some people post on Facebook that they're planting flowers they're getting some some of their spring planting done i'm waiting around here for two reasons one we are not done with winter weather in this area yet so i want to i wouldn't want to plant anything um we do have some some beds and boxes or planters outside that we want to put spring flowers in but um not quite ready to do that until i know that we're truly into the spring weather and that could be another month or so or two uh, what are we talking about? Let's see. Daylight. So Kathy says, I love daylight saving time. Sorry, scientists don't take away my long summer days. I agree with you. They and them. They want to keep it at daylight saving time. Yeah. Which all the scientists say is a bad idea. Bad. bad. You do know that all started. I think it was Benjamin Franklin who first proposed uh, that. And the switch between standard time and daylight savings time originally had to do with farming. And um, and crops and that type of thing, as I understand it. Never having been a farmer myself, I'm not positive about that, but that's what I hear. Plan to fly. Okay, so March 13th, and I, you know, to me, in one way, I think in a lot of places in the country, you'd think that National Earmuff Day might be earlier in the year somewhere, in the middle of winter. I don't know that it's necessarily a bad idea here because we are still getting a little bit of of winter weather, some cold weather and stuff. It just seems to me National Earmuff Day would almost be like a January special day but uh listen they can put special days wherever they maybe maybe it's national earmuff day because as winter is ending maybe all the earmuffs start to go on clearance sale and you can get them cheap for next winter i, I don't know <laughs> shalane noticed the model had dimples that's yeah um benjamin franklin shalane you're active today i love that oh we know what 14th is right national pie day three 14, 3.14, 3.14. And um, although it's not specifically the day to bake pies, a lot of people do that, as you see in this picture. It's not unusual that people bake pies to celebrate Pie Day. Do you do that? Do you typically celebrate Pie Day in any way? Are you a person who's into mathematics to that degree? I, I don't. It's okay with me if you want to do that. I'm fine with it. I, And also, I like pie. I mean, the kind that you eat. I don't mind the kind that's tied to mathematics either because we need scientists for daylight savings time and mathematics for pie. I kiss pies as I'm slipping them into my mouth. <laughs> also, the 14th. This is another one on the same day. I, I like this idea. National Write Down Your Story Day. Have you, have you done that? We've... Carol, more so than I have, um, has really gotten in the last few years into doing genealogy and the ancestry stuff. We're actually doing some things right now, getting very active. And on my side of the family, I'm, I'm trying to explore that some more. I've had siblings who have done more work in the past than I have. But one of the things that's really beneficial is if your grandparents or even your parents or other ancestors wrote down their stories that's recorded someplace, that's, that's a great legacy. Uh, my aunt... Uh, Mira, a number of years ago, wrote down her life story and taking it all the way back to her earliest memories in what was then Yugoslavia, now Croatia. And my dad, I think, contributed, filled in some things for her. And she had a lot of just information, not only from her memory, but documented. 
And a copy of that was given to her kids, my cousins, as well as to all of us, all of my, uh, myself and my siblings. And it is a treasure. I still go back to that and read things about my, my aunt and my dad, my grandparents, and the things that they went through um, in, in, in Croatia. And they were there in the lead up to and, and escaping from there during World War II to get away from, ultimately from the Holocaust. Uh, but it's just, just to have the stories in general is great. Carol's got some from her mom and, um, and from her, I think it's her grandmother, great grand, I think she has an actual history of her great grandmother coming across um, the Oregon trail in a covered wagon. And so having those things is fantastic. So I encourage you, this is something Carol and I've talked again about recently, because we've been delinquent in actually doing this, but we want to record our stories so that our kids, our grandkids, and those who come after us will have that. I think it's a great idea. Too. There's a lot of tools out there you can use online and you can purchase books that you can fill it in and stuff. Anyway, March 14th is National Write Down Your Story Day. And then the 15th is National Shoe the World Day. And um, that one is one that's, think about the fact that there are actually I think they said something like 500,000 on any given day, 500,000 men, women, children around the world who do not have shoes or do not have shoes that are adequate for their needs. And so there are organizations such as one that you see at the bottom of the screen here, uh, soulsforsouls.org and others that you can find online that allow you to find ways to donate uh, shoes themselves or toward the purchase of shoes that can be used in various countries. And, and even here in the United States, uh, there are places, there are situations where people need that. Faith Dubke, you, you got up early to tune in today live. I appreciate that. Thank you, Faith. Because um, you're in, she's in another time zone that's much earlier than this. Changing, changing to daylight savings time or not. Um, yeah, actually, I had to do it with the military in World War One. Um, looking, just I was just looking to see what the comments were. Yeah, headlamps. Oh, there's some great comments about daylight savings time going on. And then the 16th is National Freedom of Information Day, and that is a day. It's, it's interesting how this was timed. Sorry, I got to take a sip. My throat is a little bit hoarse today. I'll explain that in a minute too. But um, National Freedom of Information Day, the actual passage of the Freedom of Information Act was not on this date. Um, that happened later on and, and et cetera. But the, the reason that National Freedom of Information Day is celebrated today is this is James Madison's birthday. James Madison, who was often referred to as the father of the Constitution, was a huge proponent of transparency in government. He, a lot of his writings... Um, he participated in writing the Federalist Papers, and he wrote a, a variety of other things and helped to, to craft elements of the Constitution that provided for accountability in government, in the federal government. And, and one of those was that information should be available to the citizens. And it wasn't until a couple of centuries later that the Freedom of Information Act was actually passed. But we celebrated on March 16th because on March 16th, 1751, James Madison was born. So there's your piece of trivia for today. And it's also National Artichoke Hearts Day on uh, on the 16th. And how many of you are, 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 I mean, artichokes are kind of a fun vegetable to eat anyway, if you like to kind of work for it. If you've eaten artichokes before and you go through the whole process of peeling off the leaves and dipping them and scraping them. But that, the heart of the artichoke is the one that is really um, what everybody aims for. And you can get, you know, you can buy just the hearts alone. You can buy them frozen, canned, you can buy them fresh. But are you an artichoke heart person? And if so, do you just like to eat them? How do you, do you put them on your pizza? Do you use them in other recipes? How do you like to have artichokes and, and artichoke hearts, just out of curiosity? And then of course, March 17th, Friday is, St. Patty's Day. I think everybody's Irish, maybe even everybody's Catholic on, on Friday, uh, wearing of the green. And in case the question comes up, yes, I do have St. Patrick's Day socks and I even have a matching St. Patrick's Day shirt. So I'll probably post pictures Friday of all of that. So um, there you have that. Hey, birthdays have a couple of them. They're both today. Uh, Rie Dar Darnil, Darnil, I can't, it's time for coffee. I cannot pronounce words. 
I'll get it. Rie Dernil, who is my cousin Brenda's daughter. So my first cousin once removed, if you get into the whole genealogy ancestry thing, that's how that works. Uh, celebrating a birthday today. And this would have been, my dad passed away about a year and a half ago, but this would have been dad's 96th birthday today. And Kathy mentioned that earlier, a happy birthday to Frank the dad. Um, it was interesting because back in the day, they used to get together uh, with my aunt and uncle and all the cousins, and they would get together and celebrate off and celebrate the birthdays together. And and Rie and, and my dad used to sell, say, having the same date as their birthdays used to celebrate together. So we still honor dad and, and recognize his birthday. Happy birthday to you, dad. Hey, if you have a special day coming up this next, this week that we missed, if I, if I missed a day, a birthday anniversary or something else special, would you put it in the chat so that we can make sure we celebrate with you? If you have a special day coming up sometime later in the month of March, you can email that to me. You can private message me on Facebook, or you can email to cbwsteve at comcast.net. And uh, then I can make sure I add that to our calendar and we recognize your special day along with you uh, when the time comes. Yeah, the reason why voice is a little bit hoarse and the reason that Kathy mentioned at the beginning of this, if you were tuned in then, that I look better than expected. Is I did. I think I mentioned this last week that this was coming up, but I had a surgical procedure done yesterday. It was outpatient surgery. I checked in the morning, came home in the afternoon and... Um, still kind of a, they still consider it major surgery because they have to put you under and, you know, they actually have to get inside you and that kind of stuff. But it, it went well. Everything went great. I got home yesterday afternoon. How am I feeling today? Um, I didn't sleep fantastic last night. Still some discomfort and a little bit restless, but I'm doing okay today. The reason the voice is hoarse is because when they put you under, they also have to make sure that you, that they have to manage your breathing. And so they have process procedure that they do for that and so it leaves you a little bit throat a little bit hoarse for a day or two so but i'm fine i'm feeling fine and 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 kathy said i even sound much better than than expected thank you did i have the amazing snore again not yet uh, i think the last time i had a procedure done it was a couple of nights later because of the um the way that doing the, the, when they intubate you, it kind of creates irritation in the throat. And a couple of nights after my last procedure, Carol was, I'd gone to bed before Carol and she was out in the living room and she heard me snoring and she came in and actually recorded it. And it's amazing. It sounds like a cow mooing. It is the strangest snore you'll ever hear in your life. And, and uh, she's been, it's been recommended to her that she make that her ringtone. And look, and by the way, if you go on either my Facebook or Carol's Facebook, you will actually see photos of me before and after in the in the prep room and in the recovery room. And especially in the recovery room, I look like Jerry Lewis in the in the um, in one of his movies, the the nutty professor or something. It just looked but it's this is revenge photos because various times that Carol's been in the hospital, I've taken and posted pictures of her without her permission so this was all planned well in advance that she was going to get to do this all right i want to get on to our guest today and, and give you time uh to interact with him if you were tuned in at the beginning when we were doing the the lead-in um, we played some music but i want to tell you a little bit about derek nelson derek is returning to coffee breaks he was on it's been almost two years ago he and i were amazed that it's been that long. But Derek is a singer, a songwriter, a producer, and an educator who lives in Olympia, Washington. He writes, records, and produces his own music as a self-taught multi-instrumentalist and audio engineer. His videos have received over 4 million views on YouTube, performed in 150 cities around the USA, and reached over 100,000 students of all ages with educational music, workshops, outreach programming, and fundraising assemblies. You may, have, you may recognize Derek. He appeared regularly as the lead guitarist on television's Glee. If you were a fan of Glee, he was the guy in the background typically playing the guitar when they sang. His original songs can be heard on TV and in movies, and his singing voice has been featured on such shows as ABC's Modern Family, Fox's Raising Hope and New Girl, CBS's How I Met Your Mother, and NBC's Go On and The Voice. Derek holds a Bachelor of Science in Music Industry from the University of Southern California, where he helped to shape the curriculum 
that has now become the popular music degree program, a program that only 3% of applying singer-songwriters are accepted into very elite and for which Derek was honored with the department award, recognizing his contributions. Among the other awards that Derek has received are the Brian Wilson Music Scholarship for Songwriting, the award for best male artist in the 12th annual International Acoustic Music Awards, and first place in the Indie International Songwriting Competition for his original song, The Way It's Gonna Go. Derek was invited by the USC President's Office to write the music and lyrics for the USC graduating class of 2011's commencement anthem. His song, Take Chances, was featured at commencement and was the catalyst for his first independent tour across 40 locations on the West Coast to raise money for high school arts and music programs. This conversation with Derek was recorded a few days ago because of Derek's availability, but you can still join the conversation with your comments and questions for Derek in the chat. Derek has told me he will be able to sign in later and respond to your questions. So let me welcome and let you interact now with Derek Nelson. Well, Derek Nelson, welcome back to Coffee Breaks with Steve. It's been a while, but it's good to have you back with us again. It is so good to be here. Thank you, Steve. And I am I am ready to go. With <laughs> you are ready to go. Steve uh, Mug here. Excellent. Well, you know, it, the last time we spoke, we were just uh, we were in the midst of the pandemic. And I recall that that had already changed a lot of what you were doing. And just kind of to recap, I remember that just before the pandemic hit, uh, Derek Nelson and family, your your trio with your siblings was still something you were, you had shows scheduled. You were just getting ready, I think, to travel overseas for a UN tour. And everything changed when the pandemic hit. It, I mean, it, yeah. It was a very, I mean, it was a difficult time for everybody. So I, I don't want to try to sit here and say that I'm special, <laughs> but everybody had to adapt. Right. And, um, you know, the nice thing about it is it did pave the way for a lot of meaningful connection in other ways, as you are proof of facilitating um, really cool conversations yeah. uh, just on this platform alone is, is a really special thing. Um, but for us, yeah, it was it was bittersweet to have to um, officially professionally disband as mm -hmm. a as a performing music trio. Um, that was a, a huge dream of mine that I had spent a lot of my life um, building to and felt like we had finally reached um, the top of the roller coaster, so to speak, and just was not prepared for the drop. And um so it was hard, especially with family, uh, especially yeah. with something that is so meaningful. The music was written by me for yeah. me to sing with my brother and sister on stage. And um, to have that be our full time job uh, was such a privilege. And that piece of it is definitely not lost on me and is even more uh, special now to look back on and um, and meaningful. Um, now that it has uh, has come to a close. So even though the chapter has has closed, it, it has been um, we view it very positively because it's made um, opportunities available to us in our own individual lives that weren't necessarily there uh, with all of our time spent together on the road touring. Um, so, yeah, it's it's created some really cool opportunities in, in my life and is a great reminder to us all about perseverance and letting things go in order to make room for um, for new beginnings. And let's talk a little bit about those new beginnings, because your priorities did change during COVID. You did launch some new ventures and, and approached what you were doing in a different way. And I just, you know, what were some of those things that happened as a result of the pandemic and what of those things has continued now? Yeah, great question. Um, being a musician, music was, um, the focus on people making music was heightened because of this uh, idea that now we're, you know, we're isolated, we're in our homes, we're learning instruments and wanting to get um, our, our voices heard. Mm -hmm. So the demand for um, professional sounding recorded music um, went through the roof. And so me, here in my little home studio um, with talents and passions for playing different instruments and putting all of those pieces together to make great sounding recordings 
suddenly I had an opportunity to partner with other artists and other musicians who didn't necessarily know how to put a band together, how to book studio time, what goes into producing, recording, mixing, mastering. Well, those are all things that I love to do. So to be able to expand my own skills as a musician to help other people create music that they love and get it out there in the world um, became my new purpose. Yeah. And with that comes a lot of different creative projects. And so it, it became very project to project for me. Um, and uh, um, I think there was a, a lot of time that I spent trying to figure out what my next dream was you know, I felt so purposeful writing my own music and performing for people on stage and with that element missing it it almost opened up like a lot of um, uncertainty and um, and so working with other artists and getting to see the joy um, from them based on the things that I was helping them create uh, really was sort of a light bulb moment for me. And we can talk a, a little bit more about um, where that has led now, because I have yeah. another really exciting opportunity that just began this past month. Okay, let's talk about that. What you've, you've now put the teaser out there, Derek. Let's <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> well, the big, the big reveal in talking about purpose um, and legacy, if you will, uh, you know, I've been in the music business for over 20 years now. Yeah. How's that? Something. What did you start when you were five or something? I Come on. Here, right? <laughs> yeah, you could sleep at night, you know. <laughs> I try, <laughs> but it is, uh, it's over 20 years. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. anyway. And I, I just it's grown from this this early age of, of having this passion for music and having um, a curiosity, be a uh, excuse me, curiosity about learning. And so, with that comes a level of um of wonder about what kind of things am I going, if, am I going to leave behind? Right. I have this catalog of music that um, I have a, a small, but very, um, very loyal and supportive fan base who love my music. And the fact that I can make an impact on people through the songs I write is amazing. But I know that that's not the limit of the impact that I can make on somebody else and the way that I can serve the world. And so the biggest thing for me um, during the pandemic was, again, figuring out how to move this connection piece online. And so I, I hosted a, a, a lot of different online collaborations. Um, some of them were uh, supported by the State Department as we, we moved some of these tours uh, to a, a virtual model. Um, I was able to create some curriculum that um, utilized the online interface as a way to strengthen bonds between musicians and, and people across cultures and countries. And that opened some doors for me um, because I, I'm now thinking about how you can impact another person from a music education standpoint. What can I do to help inspire the next generation of musicians who want to be singer songwriters, who want to be producers in their own studios and create an independent career that they love in the same way that I have. Mm. Um, so I got a call from out of the blue from a uh, public charter school in Southern California. And being a, a, a former California native, you might be familiar with them. Um, they're new in the past five years. They've only been around five years, but uh, the school is called Elite Academic Academy. And again, a, a public school. Uh, they serve uh, multiple different counties in Southern California. And they are completely online. So virtual homeschool um, with flexible options for their students to learn at their own pace, focus on the... Um, the time of day that they want to be in classes to uh, to maximize their own individual skills, passions, and talents. So there's a lot of alignment there um, for me because I I love the idea of that program and um, this school is Steve. It's revolutionizing education. I mean, every day I'm sure you see headlines about where education is going and people getting pulled out of the you know pulling their yeah. kids out of the public school system and. So trying to find ways to keep students engaged um, is a really big challenge. This school, get ready for this, 
again, only been around five years. Okay. This past year, they were awarded the California Distinguished School Award for performing in the top 6% top six of all percent. schools in California. That's huge. All public schools in California, the top 6%. That just blew me away. Good we're man. talking about COVID. Yeah. We're talking about across the nation, students struggling to be engaged in, in class, yeah. um, education levels plummeting, performance levels plummeting, students really struggling. And this school did the opposite. So the, it, it's just an incredible um, testament to um, the amazing woman that, that founded uh, this school. Megan Freeman is her name. She's the, the CEO. And she's constantly dreaming of new ways that, that she can provide opportunities for everyone who wants to attend this school. Mm -hmm. um, no barriers of entry. And you can imagine how difficult it is can be to try to imagine how to teach music, how to teach performing arts, how to teach any sort of creative music focused programs. So once she saw some of the things that I did, I know we talked about dancing in the living room last time that I was yeah, on yeah. Um, and some of these collaboration uh, <laughs> events that I had uh, produced and coordinated, she was like, oh, Derek might be the guy who can help us solve this. So I am so thrilled to say that I've partnered with them and uh, we just completed our first of two um, two week workshops with uh, small group intensives and the students just thrived, Steve. It really, it, it was that moment for me where I felt like I have found my next dream. Um, and I've been waiting a long time to try to put together some sort of education program and spinning my wheels a little bit as a, a lot of people do sometimes when there's a, a giant project or a giant goal that you, you have in your mind about what you want to do and trying to figure out where to start can be really daunting. Suddenly this opportunity came in and they have the foundation laid for mm -hmm. how to um, provide resources and infrastructure to make all the things that I would love to do happen. So it really is uh, an awesome partnership so far and I can't wait to see where it goes. <laughs> Congratulations on that. That does sound like such a perfect fit. I, as you were describing it, I thought of all the things that I know you've done over the past two or three years but throughout your 20 plus years, it just, all of it fits so well. So that, that just sounds like that's fantastic. And, and you're continuing now along with that. Are you, you're continuing to back out there performing? Are you recording at this time? What else is going on? Yeah. So I have, um, I am very fortunate that um, one of the tours we had scheduled that um, was going to be in 2021 uh was then canceled, obviously, due to everything that happened um, in 2020. And um, we were able to reach back out to some of the presenters that were a part of that tour. And it's mostly primarily through the Midwest and um, rebook those dates uh, with a special evening of songs and stories with Derek Nelson. So it's going to be an acoustic show. I'll play both guitar and piano. Um, not at the same time, but I don't know, <laughs> don't pass me. <laughs> and that's slated for next spring. So spring of 2024, 24. Um, it'll be a short run, a few, a few weeks that I'll do out in the Midwest. Um, but I'm, I'm excited that's about that. That's great. That's great. And hopefully you'll be, is that something, I mean, that'll be available to the public. There'll be information on your website and other Absolutely. places where people I'll can find, find that at the proper time. Website. And um, especially your, your listeners or anyone listening out there. Um, who is located or has family or friends um, in the Midwest. Uh, it's not necessarily a region that, that um, tends to get a lot of um, big acts coming through, which is why some of these associations uh, started these concert series to give smaller towns and smaller areas um, exposure to great music. And so I'm, a, I'm honored to be one of those musicians that, that gets to serve those, those communities. For your own, you know, you're talking about now being able to be more involved in education in the school. A little bit more about your background. What age? I mean, musical family, obviously. At least 
at least with your siblings. I don't know about your parents. And that would be interesting to know how musical was your family. And at what age did you really know that music was something that interested you and that you wanted to continue to pursue? Oh, that's a great question. Um, yeah, my, my parents are, are great music appreciators. Okay. But they're not necessarily musicians themselves. Um, but we always had, uh, I mean, we, I was exposed to amazing artists and bands that were, you know, on the, on the stereo in the CD player growing up, Kenny Loggins and Sting and Steely Dan and, uh, you know, Pat Metheny, uh, one of my jazz heroes, oh, yeah. a, a wide range of music that we kind of grew up with. And so that really informed um, my experience and, and foundation with music from an early age. But I've never told anyone this story, I don't think. But I remember when I was probably, gosh, I was little. I was probably five or six. And I didn't know anything about sheet music or reading music or anything. But I had, while I was outside on the swing, I had come up with this little song that I had written about the sky and the birds and the trees and everything. And I didn't want to forget it. And so I came back inside and I found a little notebook and I wrote the words down. And then I was like, I remember this moment in my head where I was like, but how am I going to remember how it goes? So Steve, I kid you not, I made like dashes and drew little lines above the words with how long it was supposed to be and kind of what like a very basic like Cruise music version. notation you you oh, created you your own language yeah. of music notation yeah. to remind you to to hold on to that that's exactly. fantastic i wish i could find that little whatever uh, that little thing that be paper. great that would be so cool uh, what's that well, that would be great to be able to oh. locate that right yeah what a, what a i'll talk about legacy i mean to be able to pass that along and say this was this was my first this was the first time i composed <laughs> a song right that's great i love that do the remixed version now. Yeah, do the, do the remix. Yeah, oh, back no. in the studio with it. Um, so was there, do you recall a point in, in that growing up? Because obviously also your, your siblings were pursuing at some stage their own musicality. And uh, was there a crossover there? Was there a point where you as a child went, I'm, I'm really interested in this. I really wanted, I mean, you know, whether that was starting the garage band or just doing things that, that led you into a place where it was becoming part of your life, really. Yeah. I mean, with, with my siblings, none of us, um, we all suck at sports. So as <laughs> kids, they, you know, mom and dad tried to sign us up in tons of different stuff. Uh, basketball, I could barely throw the, the ball high enough to even reach the net, let alone into the hoop. Um, football, I lasted one play. You can imagine <laughs> that. I don't have to spell it out for you. Honestly, volleyball was the, um, was the biggest uh, thing that I, I stuck around for two years, fifth grade and sixth grade. And I thought it was great. Like, There's only girls on this team. I, this is awesome. I'm the only guy. This is great. And then it started to dawn on me by about sixth grade why <laughs> and the funniest part about that is then um uh my first day of high school we, we uh transferred school districts so i was at a new school yeah. and by that time i was you know 14 or 15 i was a sophomore and um i had made by that time i had made my first cd and um i made it at home in my room and i printed them myself and so they i had passed them out at lunchtime and stuff so I was thinking maybe there's a little buzz around, you know, oh, Derek is this, you know, music guy. So I am walking through the hall and this girl catches my eye and she says, oh, Derek, Derek Nelson. I was like, yes, yes, that's yeah, that's that's me. You. Uh, uh, yeah. And she's like, we played volleyball together <laughs> in fifth grade. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> not the memory you wanted that wasn't the attention you wanted to I was hoping for but um yeah a, a great example of the fact that sports were never any of our strong suits uh, but we loved doing theater we loved being on stage we loved art um we all you know played instruments in school band and um and so from that there came this uh this this love for um, an audience and the the 
the exchange of energy between performer and audience and um, all three of us really always fed off of that. So anytime that mom and dad had friends over for dinner, I mean, we were seven, eight years old and we would put on little shows in the, in the kitchen and um, hold these poor people hostage for you know hours on end, <laughs> making up songs and dances and all sorts of stuff. So, uh, yeah, it was always a part of of our life, and to get to kind of rekindle that later on in our adult years and um, and turn it into something professional uh, was really a, a dream come true. No kidding. Your family and my family would have gotten along. I sucked at sports too, yeah. and. Um, my younger brother was was good at sports. He played he played some sports, but my family was another one of those that my siblings and I we would just get together. We'd start sing, we'd sing along with whatever was playing on the radio or the in in my day it was the record player, um, and or the cassette tapes. But we'd harmonize with it. My uh, older sister and I were both in choir at the same time in in school. You know, did all the the musicals. The, and just that was just part. And then our kids, not surprising. I mean, we didn't push them that direction, but um, it was it, when we were doing that. My, and my wife is the same way, came from a very musical family. So she and I were always singing as our kids grew up. We were introducing them to different music. And so that the music was just always in there. Um, yeah. We didn't turn ours around to uh, what you and your siblings have done with it or what you have done individually, but it's, I can relate to what you're saying. Did, was there a point, what was the point as you think back, was there a crossover point where you really realized that you, I mean, the first big break, was that something as Derek Nelson and family, was it something you did individually where you kind of went, not necessarily, okay, I've really made it. Cause I think, you know, all of us realize even when you're in the entertainment, maybe especially when you're in the entertainment business of some kind that you're going, there, I always have to continue to work for and fight for that next gig, that next thing. So I don't know that we ever say I made it, but was there a point where you really felt like this is the big, this was a turning point? Um, I think that feeling that people describe of wanting to quote unquote, make it has to do with validation. Yeah, because so much of our career, no matter what field you're in, um, there is that level of insecurity around, um, am I good enough? Do I belong here? Is this what I'm meant for? Am I right for this? Do people care? Right? So overcoming those insecurities and getting forms of validation, I think, is the definition of making it. And those okay. little moments come in different ways. But the one that stands out to me the most was um, my freshman year of college. I had uh, gone to the University of Michigan um, to study performing arts technology, which I thought was going to um, open up a lot of different uh, educational avenues for uh, the, the kind of music that I wanted to create and the, and the production side of things that I really wanted to learn. Mm -hmm. And it was a little bit frustrating, not that it's not an incredible program. Uh, it just wasn't right for me. There was a lot of time that I spent in a um, basically like a computer lab with headphones on programming music and learning to program things. But in my heart of hearts, I wanted to write real songs and perform them and get on stage. And um, and so I was really longing for that. And so I just I took a huge leap and I decided I think I'm going to transfer colleges. You know, mom and dad just got me set up here and um, I have friends here and I don't know any, I've never been to Los Angeles, but I'm already thinking like after college, what do I really want to do? I want to do something in the music industry. I don't think I'm going to necessarily find that as fast or as easily in Michigan. It's also super cold here. I can't do <laughs> in April. Not happening. <laughs> so I took a huge leap as an 18 year old and decided something isn't going right. I'm going to make a change and I'm going to take a huge chance and put myself out there and, and see what happens. So I transferred to USC, the University of Southern California, and it was like a domino effect where things started to click. And by the end of my, my first year at USC, 
I was working hard to write songs, to meet people that I could collaborate with, to go the extra mile for the professors I was working with. And it gained a lot of no notoriety. People started to notice. Mm -hmm. And to my surprise and honor and, I mean, utter disbelief, I received an email that I was awarded a scholarship for songwriting from Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys. Yeah. When, the, when I got that, I was like, well... <laughs> Clearly they see something in me. If Brian Wilson sees something in the things that I'm writing, like absolute legend songwriting hero, um, then obviously that, that means something. That's not just something that, you know, everybody gets, you know, a, a dinner and a, an honor and an award from Brian Wilson. So that was something that gave me immense momentum moving forward that I'm on the right path that there's something here that if other people of this stature can believe in me, mm -hmm. then man, I can believe in myself. That's great. What do you think? I know we're going to get short on time here, but I, I wanted to ask you this. You talked about some of the things that you've done across cultures, across even internationally, even doing things online. But what do you think it is about music that makes it such a universal language? I think music, I mean, music as a universal language is able to communicate emotion. And I don't think it's any surprise that 99% of songs are written about love, the mm -hmm. most powerful human emotion. So people feel that. I think as human beings, we understand emotion and feeling above anything else. And music is what is the conduit for allowing us to express that. And it's a really fascinating thing to watch when you see musicians at a high level, um, you know, just jam or improvise with each other. Mm -hmm. It's a conversation without words. You know, you can, you can follow the story, you can follow the journey. And as listeners, we have the same abilities, whether or not we've expanded our vocabulary to understand the, you know, the intricacies of all the words that are, you know, quote unquote, words that are being expressed. If you go to another country and you hear people talking, you can sometimes follow what the conversation topic is or what the feeling is. And the same is true in music. Mm -hmm. And so getting to do that in places like Kiev, Ukraine, uh, places like Transnistria, a breakaway region of Moldova that um, is in the news now a lot, obviously, with, with the war. Um, having those experiences where um, we've performed James Taylor songs in uh, or Eagles songs in a huge auditorium with people that do not speak English. <laughs> and to see tears in their eyes and them singing along to peaceful, easy feeling in three part <laughs> harmony is a magical thing. And it's yeah. such a great reminder of the power of music oh, yeah. and what it does to, to um, remind us that we're all human beings. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Final thing here, where can people, if they want to find out where you're gonna be performing, they wanna get a hold of some of your music, where can they go? DerekNelson.com. Thank you for the plug. It's Derek, D-E-R-I-K, Nelson.com. Uh, again, I love taking on new creative projects. Um, I'm doing a lot of different things right now. Anything from recording and mixing and production to custom songwriting. Yeah. I'm even doing private music business coaching to help other artists get, um, get their feet on the ground and establish their own independent career success in, in music in today's day and age. Um, so if you are interested in songwriting, in playing guitar, in how music can become a part of your life and a part of your career, please get in touch with me. I would love to be a resource to you. And you can email me, contact me through my website. It goes right. directly to me. I read each and every email I get. Um, and DerekNelson.com. Stay in touch with me there. And um, and I look forward to, uh, to hearing yeah. from you. And, and we're going to be showing that information uh, for everybody. We're going to have the website available and, and uh, sharing that information. 
Derek, it's always a pleasure to chat with you. And I doubt very seriously, unless you're opposed to it, it's going to be the last time that we uh, converse and share share what's going on in life. So thank you for being yeah. here. mug will travel, Steve. <laughs> All well, right, my friend. On the internet right here. There Before you go. we go, Steve, can yeah. I put you on the spot? Because You can always put me on the spot. Your, your listener base doesn't get to hear from you. What inspired you to start Coffee Breaks with Steve? Why is it inspiring to you? Um, you know, it's a great way. It's funny because I started at Derek before COVID. And it's another one of those situations that really became much more profound during the pandemic. But just a way to continue to connect with people. And I refer to it as being the virtual coffee table. We get to sit around and, and talk about things that might be interesting and, and bring very interesting and, and wonderful people like you into the conversation. So for me, what inspires me is people connecting with people and, and talking about things that are going to raise our level of understanding and appreciation. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing this show. You're an amazing host and it's an, a, an awesome service that you're providing thank to you. people who want to further their, their understanding of other people's lives. And, and um, it's an awesome thing that, uh, that you're doing. So I'm, I'm just you. thrilled to be a part of it and please invite me back anytime. Very good. Derek Nelson, take care my friend. We'll talk again. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Till next time. All right, Derek Nelson. Uh, yeah, shall I mention the same thing happened the last time Derek was on the show. He uh, he does love to turn the tables, and I appreciate that. It's the interest that he shows in what's going on. I want to quickly let you see where you can follow up with Derek. This is his website, uh, Derek Nelson. He mentioned it, uh, www.dereknelson.com. We had it up here on uh, on the screen a few minutes ago. I'll put it back up there. Pretty straightforward. Just make sure you're spelling his name correctly. But uh, DerekNelson.com, and through there you can also, among other things, you can uh, get to where his you can find his actual music and go through and look for his albums, the various downloads that are available, and uh, get to his music. Some of it is still out there from when he and his siblings were recording and traveling together. Derek Nelson and family and. It's great music throughout, and he's done some more recent things too. So just a uh, a just an opportunity for you to get out there and and listen to and download Derek's music. I know he'd appreciate that, and it's it really is worthwhile to listen to. He's got some great stuff out there. So I just want to very quickly share with you again some of the things coming up in the next uh, few weeks here as we uh, as we continue with Coffee Breaks with Steve next week. On Coffee Breaks, Lisa Steele is going to be returning, has been on the show a couple of times in the past. She's going to talk about failure. We're going to talk about the topic is failure is not an option, or is it? We're going to talk about why we avoid and fear failure so much, why it creates so much insecurity and, and so much um, issue for us. And part of that comes from circumstances we've been in where we've been made to feel that failure is a bad thing. And, and Lisa's going to help us understand why failure can be a very positive thing and why we should, in fact, embrace the failures that occur in our lives because they are part of the learning process to move on to the next step. Two weeks out, Anna Leah Young is going to be with us. Anna Leah is something of an expert on manners and etiquette. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about things that have been part of our manners in the past and, and propriety in the past that may have fallen by the wayside may, may now be passe, but what is still relevant? The please and thank you. And do we hold doors open for people? Do we hold chairs for, for ladies? Is it still ladies first? And kind of what, uh, what do we need to know about manners and that type of thing? And then in three weeks, who do you think you are? Where does our identity come from? Um, we're going to talk about how we identify ourselves from the things that we do and from the things that we've been exposed to and just talk about identity as, uh, as a part of going through our own lives. And uh, if you have topics that you'd like to see us discuss, this is your virtual coffee table. If you have topics you would like to see us discuss, guests that you would like to see us see, see that you would, uh -oh, that you would like to see finish this up. There we go. You can send me a message. You can email me at cbwsteve at comcast.net to share your ideas. Love to see those. And, um, and of course, want to know what 
you want to be a part of because you are part of the conversation. Once again, I just want to uh, say thank you to Derek for being here. I want to say thank you to all of you for being here and being part of the conversation today. I know there's a lot of things you can be doing on a Saturday morning besides hanging out with me, but I love you guys and I appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time to be here. And uh, just remember that we all have something in our lives, like Derek. In Derek's case, he's shared a lot of what he has. Well, Derek may have certain unique characteristics, but we all have some unique characteristics about ourselves, things that we can share. So please find a way to make a difference in your world this week. Take care. God bless you. Have a great week.